Welcome back to What RT Noobs. This is the SU-122A. It's the Tier 5 Soviet SPG. It's located on the northeast corner of Oyster Bay and it's under the command of AP Gibbo of Philo. Now this Tier 5 RT actually has a 152mm main gun capable of 550 Alpha, 38mm pen, 6.7 meters on the burst radius between six and a half and 11 seconds of stun but it takes forever to dial in on targets so you have to be very patient to get kills but once you're actually dialed in on an area then it becomes much easier now it has got a very narrow arc only 7.5 degrees either side of the center line so 50 degrees in total and it is based on the SU-76, um, but it was one of the designs that the Soviets actually discarded. They weren't going to go ahead with this one. And in fact, they made the SU-122, which hasn't been seen in the game yet, but it could be as a premium RT. Okay, well, he's gone into the bushes, and now he's aiming. Now, 550 Alpha. So once he's dialed in, he could get a lot of damage. It's basically a similar howitzer to the one on the SU-8. That also does 550, but loads a lot quicker. This one's got a reload time of 30.3 seconds. And with his first shot's a biggie. 237, he got the stun assist, and the Honey is out the game. Yes, the reload time that uh, we're seeing here from Gibbo is 24.54 so he's knocked at least five seconds five and a half seconds off the reload time at the moment he's having a look for enemy tanks over to the south side it's a little difficult to get shots over there but oh look at this t34 85 is sneaking up oh but that didn't work out so well for him he just got he just met the leopard and the leopard auto cannoned him can't get a shot on that VK. Oh, but they found a VK 3002D. And they might be able to get a shot on that because the guy's out in the open. And there's a T29 there as well. Okay, I think he's going to do the T29. He is receiving fire, that guy. Unfortunately, it hits the walls. He wasn't fully dialed in when he actually fired. And it really does make a big difference with this RT to dial in fully before you shoot. Might also help to relocate, get closer to the enemy. This RT doesn't move very fast, only 30 kilometers an hour. Rounds out, looks good. Lands right next door to him. He did damage the tracks and he got stunned and the stun yielded a nice amount of hit points there. Okay, a Nazhorn on the enemy team. has been seen at the back and he's marked the target. Now you put your rescue over the target press the t key and that tells your teammates that you're actually specifically going after that target and that helps them he fired a bit prematurely there oh but the nashorn actually moved back into the stun zone and got hit but he got rid of the stun fairly quickly he's not the only one that was spotted there's an a46 over there as well and one of the enemy rt has been spotted a gorilla They've got two RTs on the enemy team. The other one is an M41 HMC. We can't see the Nashorn anymore. He's gone around the corner and into cover. But we just saw the tracer from the other RT, the M41. He's over it on the docking bay. Okay, so we're looking at the T29, but that's a really difficult shot, mainly because he keeps coming out from behind that rock. Uh, it's not really a good shot at the moment. It would be better if he came forward he's lined it up oh no it's gonna miss 45 hit points only from splash a bit of stun but we lost it yes it might be much better for him if he was actually go a bit further forward and whilst he's reloading get closer to the enemy it also might change the angles to make it easier for him to get shots on the enemy as well that gorilla's in a position where we can't hit him at the moment, but there are a few enemies to the south you can see there. 
And if he moved forward a bit, that T29 and the HE15A might come within range. It's going to go for the corner again. Rounds out. And he splashes the T29. Gets some stun. But no stun assist. It would really help him if he was to actually move forward, get closer to the enemy. Okay, he's loaded. Rounds out. Ah, he does track the AT-15. And he is getting stun assist now. But the stun's worn off. But he did get something out of it. The guy still tracked, and it was his track that originally tracked the guy. Fires another round in, and he gets another hit. 179 this time, more stun, but no stun assist, I'm afraid, again. That AT-15 keeps getting hit, but now he's down to one shot, and there you go. Well, we're one up on the enemy at the moment, but that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to win. As far as we can tell at the moment, we do have a numbers advantage. We actually have a deficit on hit points. The enemy has more. So I think our attack has actually lost us a few. There's the M41. I think he might be outside range for us. Yes, he is. We've got a grayed out line which means he's outside our range. And again, we need to move forward to get a kill on him. He's decided to move, and that's going to help a great deal. The closer you get to the enemy, the more likely your shells are going to hit them, and also hit them whilst they're uh, not moving, or at least when you can get an accurate shot, and then stun them. Okay, got an easy eight there. He's getting shot in the rear by some of our guys. We're dialing in. Not fully there yet. Rounds out. Looks good. And it does get him some stun and splash. Oh, he might get all of it in this one. Yes, he does. So that one certainly yielded a lot. There's only three enemies left. We're three up on the enemy. They've got a Covenanter, an A46, and that Nadshorn. They've lost all their arty. And then, oh, their Covenanter just ram killed, or tried to ram kill the E25, and it didn't work out so well for him. And now we've got the A46 coming in, and he's trying to run away from the E25, who actually gets wiped out by the Nadshorn. There's the Nadshorn. Well, we can certainly hit the Nadshorn. He's within range. We're dialed in, and rounds out. Oh, one shot kill. Fantastic shot. And that's the last kill of the game. And it's a victory. Here's the end of battle stats. And that was an ace tanker game from AP Gibbo Philo in the SU-122A. He managed to get a bruiser middle for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got eight. And his win eight from that game was 2,657, which is Unicum standard. Very well done indeed. Let's have a look at team score. Didn't get the highest damage in the game. That actually went to the T29. He got a high caliber for 2,540 hit points of damage. Second highest damage went to the AT-15A. And of course, he did have a lot to do with that guy being killed. He got a cool headed and 1,901 hit points. The third highest damage went to the E25 on our team with 1,750. And he didn't get any medals at all. We can see that AP Gibbo got 1,042 hit points. He was beaten by four members of the enemy team, three members of his own team, which means his eighth place on damage. When it comes to kills, we can see the high scorers were the E25 and the SU-100 on the enemy team. Both got four kills apiece. Three kills went to the Nashorn. Two kills went to the AT-15A, the T-43, the M-10 RBFM, and the T-67. AP Gibbo only got the one kill in the game, but it was the last one of the game, killing the Nashorn with an outright hit right in the, uh, in the back of the vehicle. 
which took him out completely. When it came to base XP, we can see the highest was the E25 1044. He was the only one to get over a thousand, but in second place, AP Gibbo got 720, and in third place, the SU 152 got 710. He fired only 10 rounds in the game. You only get 18 rounds, so of course, he only had eight left at the end of the game. He got four direct hits on the enemy, one penetrating shot and eight splash. Well, I'm pretty sure the penetrating shot would have been the Nashorn because that shell went right through the guy. 277 hit points from one shot alone and he got three critical hits. He took out the track, the commander and the radio operator with one round. He also got 1042, all of it at more than 300 meters. Damage five the enemy, killed one, so missed out on getting a confederate. But he got 223 hit points of damage assistance. That's where he knocked the tracks off the AT-15A. And 633 hit points of stun assist off eight stuns. On a free-to-play account, he actually made a loss of 5,287 credits. But it's not a huge amount. And it's mostly down to the fact that he did use premium consumables to actually speed up the reload. And it does work. And it's, it's necessary. And 1,440 experience points out of the game as well. So a lovely game there. I think he probably needed to move a bit closer to the enemy towards the end of the game. In fact, actually, if he moved a bit closer halfway through the game, I'm pretty sure he would have been landing shells on top of that T-29 and the AT-15A to finish them off fairly early because uh, he was uh, just missing out on the angle to get decent shots on those guys. Hope you enjoyed the replay. If you did, Please give this video a like, do subscribe to our channel, leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.